In this video, I defend simpler tabletop wargames rules and tell you why simple isn't bad. They may actually be what you're looking for in your new favorite rule set. I've been teaching people, just like you, about how to get into the tabletop wargaming and miniatures hobby for about uh, over a decade now here on this channel. It can be a little daunting getting into this hobby. There's a lot to learn, and frequently new things that you've probably not done before. However, that's actually the case with most hobbies. You need to learn some things you've never done before to start to enjoy these hobbies more. Without learning, most hobbies don't work out for people. And usually, I tell people getting into tabletop wargaming that it's a good idea to start with skirmish games. You've probably heard me say this multiple times before, but I still believe this because skirmish games have fewer models to build and paint than army scale games do. When you're just getting into wargaming, the prospect of like five to maybe ten models for your team or warband or whatever is much less daunting than fifty to a hundred models or more you know, for your entire army in both monetary cost and uh, in time spent building and painting. However, there's another layer to this besides just the models. The rule sets, the actual rules that you read to learn how to play the game and all that kind of stuff, PDF, printed, whatever. Sometimes skirmish rule sets are easier than big war games, but not always. Sometimes skirmish war games can be like really, really crunchy, which is to say like tons of granularity and unit stats to track and dozens of special rules and conditions and all this detail. And this can be great for people who like that kind of thing, but it can also make for a game that's difficult to learn when it's your first wargaming rule set. Also, big war games don't always have to be really super rules dense either. Some are very quick and streamlined. The number of models you're playing a war game with can make the game go faster or slower as well. But I've played skirmish games with five to ten models that took longer to complete than army games with dozens of models. It mainly all comes down to what the rules are like. Very, you know, like crunchy, detailed rules can make games that take three or more hours to complete. And, and while, again, some people like that kind of thing, many folks, especially when they're first starting out, prefer games that take less time to play. When I advocate for war games with simpler and more streamlined rule sets, I'll be honest, it's not just for new people getting into the hobby. I've been playing miniature war games for a very long time, possibly longer than some of you watching this have been alive. But I'm still most interested when a game's rule set is streamlined and quicker to play. When games get into real kind of rules bloat mode, then I become less and less interested. People tell me in the comments that simpler games don't have any flavor or strategy, but I think that's misconstrued. Remember, war games are an abstraction, not a simulation of battles between soldiers, or between soldiers and aliens, or between soldiers and kobolds, or between, well, you, I mean, you get the general idea, right? Like, the main point is that if the player gets lost in the minutia of, like, eight different stats to track each figure in their army, it can make the game seem much more like work than a game. And, and that can make things tough for a new player trying to figure out if this is the right hobby for them. Streamlined, or rules-light games aren't worse, they're just different. And sure, there are people who love super crunchy, detailed rule sets. Absolutely. There are also people who love spreadsheets. This is not a value judgment. I'm not making fun here. I have good friends of mine who will talk about a cool new spreadsheet that they designed at work that helps like automate pricing or track products or whatever, and they start talking about pivot tables, and their eyes absolutely sparkle. I would rather die than do that. I, I use a very, very simple spreadsheet to send tax information to my accountant, and it's the worst days of my entire year. Good war games aren't about dense rules and heavy detail. They're about getting the rules out of your way so you can focus on strategy. Strategy is about unit placement and target priority, uh, risk versus reward, making acceptable sacrifices to win the day, like all kinds of things like that, right? Good war games are not about nitpicky rules gotchas and knowing all the arcane stratagems. Admittedly, if you're playing a game with those things, then knowing them will help you win more frequently, but it's just putting an extra layer of busy work 
over the top of the strategy. Let's contrast this idea with the video game world, which is much more about simulation than the tabletop wargaming world is. This is because, frankly, computers are better at remembering things than we are, like how many wounds this soldier has left, and how you know long the poison effects are going to last, and stuff like that. Things that we have a tendency to miss a lot when we're playing games or we forget, oh, geez, no, that's supposed to still affect this guy until next turn. That kind of jazz, right? In the video game world, it's very easy to see that games that are easier to play and also you know, easier to extract fun from usually sell a lot better than games that really get into the super heavy details to play. Case in point, there's a semi-popular first-person shooter game called Escape from Tarkov. I've not played it, but I've watched it on Twitch kind of a lot, trying to see if I think I would enjoy it. From what I have seen, it mostly seems to be a game about hiding in bushes or stairwells or messing around in menu screens to organize all the rolls of toilet paper and the batteries that you've scavenged. After watching it quite a bit, I still haven't bought it. But that's not to say it's not popular, it does pretty well. Any person who's played it will tell you that it has a very steep learning curve. On the other hand, there's a new third-person shooter game called Helldivers 2. It's a game about being shot out of a spaceship into the planet below, popping out of that hell pod that you've just you know been fired into the planet's uh, surface with, and then just shooting robots and alien monsters in the face repeatedly and constantly. You don't really have much of an inventory system to speak of. You just kind of pick a few things before you leave the ship in your hell pod, right? Like a couple of weapons and you know armor and maybe access to a few different types of orbital strikes. There are some things to grab while you're down there shooting aliens and robots, but if you bring them back, you don't have to store them anywhere. They just get kind of counted towards your account. Honestly, it's kind of simple, especially in comparison to Escape from Tarkov, but there's still plenty there to keep it interesting and most importantly, fun. There's still strategy and tactics, good players, can do amazingly well in that game. And it's not just about how well you can aim. Strategy and tactics are very important in that game. But it's not anywhere in the same league as Tarkov when you consider the extra rules crunch, right? And how's Helldivers 2 doing, you might ask? It is smashing records on Steam and PlayStation 5. Record numbers of concurrent players. And after watching it, like literally just for a little bit on Twitch, did I buy it? Hell yeah, I did. For democracy. So then, why are certain games in the tabletop wargaming hobby so incredibly popular, even when those rules are generally kind of bloated and overcomplicated, and in many situations difficult for new players to figure out? Not to name any specific game, but it rhymes with Warhammer 40,000. Well, it's mainly marketing in that case. You know, through the story of the Warhammer universe and all that stuff and the hundreds of different novels and books and all that stuff and the licensed video games and whatnot and all that jazz out there, it's a very, very well-known property within tabletop wargaming. It's the biggest, obviously, and therefore it's usually the first game that new players learn about. So then what are some simpler rule sets that are easier to learn and still fun to play? Well, I'll tell you about some of my favorites, but if you have some, like, easy but fun wargaming rule sets that you'd like to mention for folks to, to check out, drop them in the comments down below. And if you're looking for other options besides the ones that I mentioned here, then head down into the comments and see what other people think. And if you agree with one or more of my choices, back me up in the comments down below. The obvious one to start with, at least in my opinion, is one-page rules. They make great rule sets that are easy to figure out and play. And if you want to start adding a little bit more crunch to the rule set as you play, you know, each of these different separate games, which are mainly the Army Scale Grimdark Future and the Skirmish Scale Grimdark Future Firefight in the sort of sci-fi genre, and then the Army Scale Age of Fantasy and the Skirmish Scale Age of Fantasy Skirmish, obviously, in the fantasy genre. All of them have additional optional rules in the back of the rule set document, uh, PDF, you know, to allow you to add modular and customized additions to your battles as you go forward. Also, their games are five bucks each, or if you support them on their Patreon at the $5 a month level, like I do, you get all of their games. 
it's a very good deal. And, and they have probably one of the best online army builders available on the market. And it's also free, which makes it even easier to figure out the game and to start playing and like how to build your force and what you need and all that kind of stuff. If you're still stuck on the Warhammer 40,000 lore and models and all that kind of stuff, it's fine because nearly all of that stuff translates over to the One Page Rules games. If you look on their wiki, their wiki thing, uh, there's a translation guide that makes it all very easy for you to figure out well, when they say this, what can I use from Games Workshop or a different company. If you're looking for something else, streamlined and fun with an elegant rule set, then I'd tell you to check out A Song of Blades and Heroes from Ganesha Games. Each model in your in the game in your force, you know, only has two stats, uh, quality and combat, and then maybe a few special rules depending on how special they actually are. Leaders and HQ units probably have some, and your foot soldiers probably don't. The game is fantasy skirmish. But this core rule set has, uh, you know, once they first launched it, has now been dropped into tons of different genres like sci-fi, historical, horror, you name it. I usually run Song of Blades and Heroes at local conventions I go to, and it's very easy to teach, but has great tactical depth. Lastly, if you're interested in games more historical in nature, there's Raven Feast. This game is a great introduction to historical games without being like a really thick, overly complex rules document. Best of all, it's free, and you can, as always, use whatever kind of Ancients miniatures that you want. It was produced by Little Wars TV, a YouTube channel about historical wargaming, and it has a whole website just dedicated to teaching you how to get into the game and get playing. It's about as beginner-friendly as historicals can get. So definitely check it and the other two games that I've mentioned. Uh, check them out down in the description below. If a wargaming rule set is simple, that doesn't make it bad. Complexity doesn't make a rule set good. Are there bad, simple games and good, complex games out there? There are. But they're all like that kind of in spite of their level of complexity. If you're just getting into wargaming, maybe think twice about that game with the 300-page rule set. And maybe give the thinner book or PDF with the simpler rules a try if you're finding that the game that you're playing now is just way too much. If you like this video, it would be very helpful if you click the like button down there below. Sometimes there's, I think, fireworks. Maybe it's confetti. Who is to say? You. You are to say. Uh, if you would like to see more of this, uh, videos like this every single Friday, please hit the subscribe button as well. And thanks for watching.